So what I'm doing is I logged into my share file account. So this way I'm already authenticated in the share file and write signature. So I don't have to do both or either. Um, and right now I just kind of wanted to show this because we haven't really showed this before in uh, a couple of our write signature webinars we've done before, but I want to be sure my user has a proper write signature license so I can use the e-signature functionality. So I'm going to start off by going to people and browse employees and simply choose the gear symbol off to the right of the user you want to check the license for. And once that comes up, we're going to scroll towards the bottom and go to user access. And then we're going to see the e-signature section here and be sure this first one is checked. This is allocating a license to the user so they could use right signature. There are a couple other options here. We'll get into those a little later in one of our expert webinars to talk about that. Other than that, just be sure you scroll down to the bottom and save changes. The other thing I wanted to show is as an administrator, if you wanted to be sure you have the right amount of allocated rice signatures, we can actually check that under our admin settings. And the first option here, admin overview, it goes to, you'll see the allocated licenses. So you'll first see the allocation of your share file licenses at the top. And then the second one will be your e-signature licenses that you have allocated. Don't mind this. This is our test account. So it does display a little oddly here. Uh, but of course, in your production, you should see the amount of licenses you have allocated to your users. I did want to actually pinpoint one other thing here is when we go back into browse employees, if you actually wanted to filter out who had an e-signature or who has a e-signature license, you could simply drop this down and you'll see employees with e-signature. So as you can see, I've allocated or we've allocated e-signatures for most of our employees here, but this can at least filter out if you have a limited amount of e-signature licenses that you want to allocate over. So the first thing we're going to show today is how to sign a document yourself. We, we haven't gone through this also in one of our webinars. And today I kind of wanted to play a little bit of a scenario. Have you ever gotten a document that you needed to sign and say, for instance, we didn't have any traditional means, say, uh, through going through fax or getting the, the document scanned and printed out so I could sign it. But I have right signature be able to do that. So in this scenario, what I'm going to do is Delia is going to be sending me a document that I need to sign myself. She has already signed it, but with the power of right signature, I could bring that document in the share file and initiate the signing of the document myself. So let's do that. So I'm already logged into my share file account and I'm just going to put the file that Delia scanned for me document, put it in my files. And that will upload it. Now it's in my personal folders under my files. And what I can simply do here is right click and sign yourself. That's going to actually bring up a new window for right signature. And as you see, it's processing and downloading the document into right signature. And there we go. We have a preview of the document we're going to sign. So we're just going to go ahead and prepare this document. And again, just to showcase again, DLA has already signed this document and all I need to do is annotate. For those who have used right signature before, you'll see there isn't all the different field options or the other options that you're used to in signing a document. Uh, that's because we don't need that ability to do that. All we're doing here is signing it ourselves. So all we need to do is annotate. So for this purpose, we have three different options. We can add a check mark, add a text field, uh, and also a signature. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to start with a check mark just to show that that is truly me and I'm checking it off. I'm going to add a text field and I'm just going to be printing my name here. And then finally, I'm going to add my signature here. And you do have, of course, uh, you could use your cursor to write your signature, or I like to use the typing. And I'm going to apply. And there we go. So with that being completed, I'm going to go to next to the review it. 
and here's my finished document. Now you'll notice there is a send to, so you can actually put in an email address. So if I wanted to, I could send this directly back to Delia uh, and she would get it in a separate email. For this purpose, I actually want to actually create a share link of the finished document in share file and then use that link to put that back into the original email thread she sent me that that file, the original file that I put into ShareFile. Uh, this makes it a little less confusing, a little less emails kind of going back and forth, and um, obviously we can kind of keep it within the same thread. So again, I don't need an actual email address to be able to save this document. And there we go, it's saved. And of course you'll see that it's been executed and everything looks nice and perfect here. And now if I go back over to my files folder here, and let me just go back in and out, refresh it. There we go. Now we've confirmed that the signed letter is back in my original folder. And I wanna create that link that I'm gonna send back to Delia in our original email thread. So all I have to do here is check mark the signed document, hit share. And then from here, let's go through a couple of different options we have to create that link. The first drop down uh, has a couple options to choose from. Uh, I want to have the ability for her to view and download that document that's signed. And then from this drop down, how she can access that. Uh, there's a couple of different options here. We don't want to make this anonymous just for the simple fact that we want to have some kind of audit trail. So for instance, if we needed to see this share being created and sent to Delia, uh, and when she receives it, we want to be able to at least capture some information. And as you can see here, we want to capture her name and email address. So this gives us again, that audit trail, uh, to be able to see, uh, her accessing this documentation. We do have a couple other options that we won't go through today, but these also require Delia to actually sign in to the ShareFile account before being able to view and download that document. So I'm going to choose anyone. And again, requiring the name and email address before she can view and download. And then I wanted to be sure that to notify me when the files are accessed. So you'll get a email notification back to validate that she was able to view and download that document. So I'm going to create that link. And there we go. As easy as that, I can copy that. And again, put it back into that original email thread to send back to Delia. And to round off the day, I wanted to show a little bit about our help section. Uh, once you're in right signature directly, you'll see at the top right, a help section. And within the help section, we have a bundle of different articles that you can review. And of course you see that drop down will show you more. For instance, we did a option here for sending a document uh, from ShareFile using Byte Signature. So if I click on that document, it's going to load up a second page here. And as you can see, the article will pop up and will easily guide you through and how to do it. So these are good for refreshers. If you've got how to, or if you're sending this over to somebody, uh, it's a great resource to be able to, to find things quickly. Uh, that you might've forgot about. Now, if there wasn't an article that helped you here, what you could do is you could actually submit a ticket to support. So at the bottom left, you'll see a submit your request here. 